Let's look at Amazon. Amazon in particular is timely and interesting because Amazon recently announced that it's moving to Australia. It's worth trying to figure out what exactly makes Amazon so compelling from a business model perspective. What helps Amazon dominate across a whole range of industries? So again, we apply this three-stage uh, framework that I just shared, network effects, machine learning, and supply-side economies of scale. If you think of Amazon, the first industry that Amazon impacted was retail, because it itself created uh, a massive uh, retail base by attracting consumers towards what it was selling. But then it opened out its supply side so that any merchant could come on board and participate. And through that, it started benefiting from network effects. What it then did was to hook the consumer side so that they don't leave Amazon. It started Amazon Prime. And what Amazon Prime essentially promises you is that it gives you free two-day shipping in exchange for being part of the Prime ecosystem. But there are, uh, there's another network effect that Amazon then creates inside Amazon Prime. As more people join Amazon Prime, more partners want to be part of Amazon Prime. So now there are media partners, partners who create content, music partners who want to provide their content to Amazon Prime. So there's another network effect that happens over there, which helps Amazon enter the media industry. What Amazon then did was to help e-commerce. It put uh, a voice assistant in your home called Alexa. And Alexa has its own network effect, because you don't simply order groceries on Alexa. You don't simply order or make your e-commerce purchases. You can also manage your smart home ecosystem. So you can manage your smart thermostat, your smart doorbell, your smart light bulb, all using Alexa. So Alexa then creates a network effect inside your home and starts owning that whole ecosystem for Amazon. And in the same way that it did retail, it also took over publishing by creating a network effect where any author could come on board, publish their book on Amazon, and be discovered by readers on Amazon. So a whole range of industries were, dis were impacted because of Amazon creating network effects repeatedly by starting at that initial starting point. What Amazon then does is it uses all of these networks that it creates to gather increasing amounts of data and train its algorithms. And this is where it becomes even more compelling, because the more data Amazon gathers about what people are browsing and what people are actually buying, the more brands want to come and advertise on Amazon. So today, Amazon is on track to become one of the top two advertising companies in the world, one of the top two media companies in the world, and displace Facebook away from that. So Google is the, is the largest. Amazon could become the second largest, the way media spending is moving towards Amazon. What this data also helps Amazon do is move towards totally unrelated industries like healthcare, knowing all your consumption habits, and combining that with different kinds of health data allows Amazon to potentially move into healthcare as well, which is what they're exploring right now. And if you think of the way we make decisions about what we purchase, in the past, we used to believe in a brand. We would listen to a brand's message, we would listen to their ad advertisements, and then we would make a purchasing decision. Today, if we use Amazon, we go to Amazon, we, we listen to what other people have to say, we look at the reviews, we look at what other people bought and what I, I should be buying on the basis of that. And so consumer brands are increasingly becoming commoditized. Even more so if you think about what Alexa is going to do, where you will possibly end up in a situation where you don't ask for a certain brand of a detergent, you just ask for detergent and Alexa sends you the most relevant brand that you're interested in. And so increasingly, brands are getting commoditized because of Amazon. But what's most interesting is Amazon brings all of this together to start gaining advantages on the supply side. So because it creates these huge demand-side economies of scale, it is able to invest in technology, in physical infrastructure, to support all of the transactions that are happening on its website, on its applications, on the platform. But Amazon takes it a step further. Even Walmart used to do that. Any traditional industrial business used to benefit from supply-side economies of scale. But the way Amazon thinks is that retail is a seasonal business, and so it goes up, it goes down. When it invests in an asset base, it does not use it only for its internal retail purposes, only to power the e-commerce. It then opens the asset base as a platform, so Amazon invested in technology, and then it opened it out as Amazon Web Services for the rest of the world. 
It invested in warehousing, and it opened it out as fulfillment by Amazon so that anybody could use that warehousing as a service. And now Amazon has filed for um, patents in container shipping and logistics, and it's going to start competing with the Mersks and the DHLs of the world very soon. So what we're seeing, a company like Amazon is indirectly applying a tax on the entire economy. Every time you create something online and you use Amazon Web Services, you're paying the Amazon tax. And going forward, if they get into container shipping, everything you buy will eventually have an Amazon tax as well. So we start seeing how some of these platforms, through a combination of these three effects, start gaining monopolistic control over the whole range of industries.